Welcome to the Factory Automation Control Update. In today's session, we're going to talk about the field transmitter and the condition monitoring. We are starting with an introduction to TI's reference designs and system block diagrams. Afterwards, we present you our isolated power and data interface for low power applications reference design, TIDA 010018, followed by the introduction to the RTD replacement for cold junction compensation in thermocouple temperature transmitters, the TIDA 010019. And finally, we're going to talk about our industrial wireless condition monitoring reference design. To get to the system block diagram, you start from ti.com by clicking afterwards to application and designs. Here you can select one area of interest, for example, factory automation control. From the factory automation control page, you can then select the application you are interested in. For example, if you are looking into field transmitter and process sensors and specifically into temperature transmitter, you can click on this application link. On this side now you will see the block diagram of a typical um, temperature transmitter and by selecting the different variants you can switch for example from a thermocouple implementation to an RTD implementation and the block diagram will change accordingly. So if we are now looking at the thermocouple with cold junction temperature transmitter, uh, here you have the block diagram and then you can select within the diagram different subsystems. For example, if you're interested in digital processing, you can click here the digital processing uh, block or for example, if you want to look into details of the analog front end implementation of a thermocouple temperature transmitter, you click in this building block. By clicking in those blocks, you will realize that on the right hand side, the content for the reference designs is going to change as well as on the product tab, you will get different recommendation. So let's have a look at the recommendation for the products first. In case you're looking for an ADC for your analog front end, you can click here into the data converter tab and then you get a list of recommended parts for a temperature transmitter. By clicking then on the different parts, you will end up on the product page for this specific ADC. Alternatively, you can also look for a reference design in the area of interest. As an example here, for the isolated DC-DC power supply, we are showing here several reference design, um, isolated power and data interface for low power application. Let's have a look at this one. The landing page of our reference designs providing lots of information, starting with a block diagram, over to a schematic, a design guide and also the design files. The design guide gives you a detailed overview of the system. You have a description, an overview, which hardware is being used and finally the most important are the different test results of these reference designs. So let's have a closer look into this specific reference design, isolated power and data interface for low power applications. In this reference design, RTD replacement for cold junction compensation in thermocouple temperature transmitter, we're investigating the performance of a PT100 element versus a silicon based um, temperature transmitter. By using such a temperature sensor, there is no excitation current required. Also, there is no high precision reference resistor needed. In case you're using a temperature sensor with a digital sensor output, also no additional ADC input is needed. So overall, we have a simplified design and we are also reducing the power consumption. The first implementation is using silicon-based temperature sensors with an analog output. This is, for example, case two and case three, where we're using the LMT70 and the TMP235, which we are comparing towards the PT100 performance. The second board, we are using a digital sensor, LMT01 and TMP117 and compare this also against the PT100 performance. For the analog sensors, we still need an ADC channel, which is multiplexed uh, in this particular case, whereas in the digital sensor, we do not need an ADC channel, so the signal chain portion is simplified. In all of our use cases, there is no current excitation required and also no reference resistor needed. The initial uncalibrated test results show that the silicon-based temperature sensors are better than a PT100 element. 
and this without having the excitation current and also without having the external reference resistor for a ratiometric measurement. Hello, I like to talk to you about the isolated power and data interface for low power applications reference design TIDA-0118. My name is Jürgen Schneider, I'm working as a systems engineer with TI. Let's first have a look to such a low power application. In this case, we are talking about a 4 to 20 milliamp system, where we have the transmitter here on the left side and the PLC as a receiver of the 4 to 20 milliamp signal here on the right side. The transmitter itself consists of a sensor front end, it has a power uh, internal power regulator, for example, a step down converter or an LDO, has an MCU and has finally also a, a D to A converter, a hard modem, uh, so to uh, complete the 4 to 20 milliamp interface here on the transmitter side. And there might be also a pre-regulator which converts the loop voltage, which can be in a range, let's say, from 8 to 36 volt, down to an intermediate voltage here in this example of 5 volt. The block encircled by that line shows another TI reference design, which is called RTD replacement for code junction compensation in thermocouple temperature transmitters. So the number of this reference design is TIDA-0119 and it shows exactly the same sensor front end, the, the buck or LDO and the MCU as you have seen before. And it shows also that the ground, the input ground and the output ground are electrically connected together. However, if you have, for example, a thermocouple temperature transmitter, it's very often required that you have an isolated design, which means that the ground on the input needs to be different from the ground here on the output and there needs to be an isolation in between. How this can be achieved will be shown on the next slide. The electrical isolation between the left and the right side of this transmitter can be achieved by cutting the four direct connections which are shown here and replacing them by the TIDA-0118 reference design, which basically provides the isolation for the power and provides also the isolation here for the data. Talking about isolation, I have summarized here a number of different TI devices which are usable in isolated solutions. The power level of those uh, which those devices can address ranges from tens of milliwatt up to, let's say, 5 to 7 watt of output power. So usable in low power application, but not necessarily fitting exactly what we need. Because for our loop powered 4 to 20 milliamp type of application, we are talking about power levels for the internal power supply of the electronics in the range of hundreds of microwatt up to tens of milliwatt only. To specifically address this ultra low power level of hundreds of microwatt up to tens of milliwatt, TI came out with a number of uh, reference designs which are listed here and where we have the most recent one here in this right column, which uh, is this uh, isolated power and isolated data reference design we are talking in this topic about. It works for an input voltage ranging from 4.4 to 5.25 volt. So this is our intermediate voltage we generate, which I explained at the very beginning of the, the presentation. And it shows a power efficiency of uh, almost uh, 80%. So in detail, 78% for a voltage conversion from a 5 volt rail to a regulated isolated 3.3 volt rail at 10 milliwatt of power level. The details of this reference design are provided here. It contains the subsystems to convert non-isolated design into an isolated design. Beside the power efficiency, uh, it also uh, highlights the performance of a digital isolator which is ultra low power, uh, contains three forward and one reverse channel, where every channel consumes only 16 microamp uh, for a data rate of 100 kilobit per second. 
It consists of bug regulators, it consists of post regulators here, LDOs used as post regulators to generate really a noise free output voltage on the non isolated side, on the isolated side, and it contains here those uh, four uh, data channels uh, in total. The reference board allows an easy evaluation in a standalone test setup by using headers which we have uh, populated on the top side. Of the board. The headers are usable for connecting power input, power output, data input and data output and we have also optimized test points uh, on the board which uh, allow a noise-free measurement for example of output voltage ripple. The bottom side of the PCB contains an additional power and data interface connector which can be seen here in the block diagram but also here on the uh, PCB uh, itself. This additional power and data interface connector uh, allows to use the board itself as a plug on board on a specifically designed hardware, for example on the TIDA-0119. We have in addition a power input selection header implemented which allows to select either the power input uh, coming from the headers on the top side which is J2 or from the power and data interface connector on the bottom side, J9. The performance of the reference design have been evaluated in depth. The results of this evaluation are contained as performance graphs in the user guide of the design which can be downloaded from the web. A special kind of performance graphs is shown here. Uh, the specific graphs highlight the combined efficiency and the total input current versus the output current. So we have done a loading of the output on the isolated side as well as on the non-isolated side. Uh, we added both power uh, levels together and we divided this by the input power which gave us the total or the combined efficiency which is represented here by the solid lines whereas the dash lines show us simply the total input current of the system. This total input current of the system is especially very helpful for our application example of a loop powered 4 to 20 milliamp uh, transmitter because the internal electronic of such a 4 to 20 milliamp loop power transmitter must not have a higher power or current consumption than uh, let's say 3 to 4 milliamp. So there is a given input current budget which needs to be kept. And let's do this example here assuming this input current budget is given with 3 milliamp for this 4 to 20 milliamp transmitter example and assume furthermore that we have 1 milliamp of output current drawn from the non-isolated bug. So this is represented here by this dashed line and this is uh, the non-isolated bug which uh, is used as a parameter. So the current consumption from the non-isolated bug uh, which is used as parameter, which is in our case 1 milliamp. So this is the curve here we uh, should look and then we need to look to the interception point um, between the 3 milliamp with this curve and if we go down to the horizontal axis which gives us the output current for the isolated bug, then we can read here a value of roughly 2.5 or 2.6 milliamp, which means this is the output current which can be drawn from the isolated bug when the non-isolated bug has a load of 1 milliamp and when the input current of our design must not be larger than 3 milliamp. And you can do also here a cross-checking by combining the efficiency and uh, comparing this with the solid line here of the 1 milliamp curve. Uh, if you do the calculation you would get to 78% efficiency and if you look here you have exactly this 78%. As mentioned, the reference design demonstrates not only the isolation of power but also the isolation of data and here for the isolation of data we have used our new ultra-low power digital isolator, the ISO 
7041, which contains uh, three channels here from the non-isolated side and one channel uh, in the direction from the isolated side to the non-isolated side. Uh, both data input and data output uh, are available as header on the board. The, they are also connected to this uh, specific power and interface connector on the bottom side, so they can be easily evaluated. A special feature is also that we have here a refresh feature, which is able to uh, manage even the transmission of static uh, signals when you have this um, refresh uh, enabled. This can be done here by the jumper setting on those two headers. And again, the power consumption is ultra low, current consumption roughly 4 microamp per channel uh, in standby, 15 microamp at 100 kilobit and 116 microamp at 1 megabit per second data rate per channel. The temperature range is extended. Uh, ranging from minus 55 degrees C to plus 125 and the wide supply voltage range uh, goes from 2.25 volt to 3.6 volt in this specific case. The supply current uh, per channel performance of the uh, digital isolator is represented here in the two graphs. And uh, those are basically the graphs out of the data sheet. But the measurement we have been done with the reference design showed that there is a very good match to those uh, graphs out of the data sheet. So the last side uh, which I like to show within this topic uh, is the complete schematic which shows you here the isolated DC-DC. This is the driver, this is the half bridge transformer, this is a voltage doubler on the isolated on the secondary side. We have a step down converter on the non-isolated side, we have the LDO as post regulator. Similarly we have a configuration showing a buck and the LDO on the isolated side and we have here the ISO data block. More details you can find in the user guide, you can find also in the design folder. All is on ti.com available, simply typing in tida-0118 and you will get the ability to access all the documents uh, we have on our website. Thank you very much. This was the topic about this isolated power and data interface for low power applications and I gave you an introduction into the reference design. Thanks again. Bye. Hello and welcome to this training video on the industrial wireless condition monitoring reference design TIDA010012. This reference design can be used to quickly establish a wireless network that connects various types of sensors for condition monitoring directly to the cloud. My name is Thomas Schneider and I am a systems engineer in the industrial systems team. Condition monitoring is used to monitor the condition of machines and systems in a wide variety of application areas. Compared to the frequently used preventive maintenance, condition monitoring is a more efficient and safe alternative. Preventive maintenance means that parts of an engine are replaced too early due to fixed maintenance intervals on machines. As a result, terms are shortened unnecessarily, capital is given away. Likewise, this method is not able to detect and accurately locate defective components before failure. Defective components can cause considerable damage and downtime during machine operation. With condition monitoring, both can be realized now. One example where a condition monitoring system is useful is a wave of app with several hundreds of vacuum pumps installed, for example. Without condition monitoring, of the vacuum pumps equipment engineering has the problem that they would have only selective pump data for error analysis. Pump failures are not identifiable immediately due to manual maintenance, this would mean end plant chamber cleaning and high maintenance costs. Without condition monitoring, facility could not identify uncontrolled consumption of water, electricity and nitrogen. 
Consumption value set is electricity and gas are not detectable for individual devices. Large energy consumers would not be identifiable. For production, if a vacuum pump fails, this would mean waiver scrap, tool downtime, post-processing of waiver of the process aborts, increased throughput times, and additional costs for unplanned qualifications. In the picture on the left, you can see how a typical vacuum pump station looks like. The pumps are already measuring data like oil level, water flow, nitrogen flow, temperature, current consumption, operating hours, faults, leaks, or the exhaust pressure. The problem in a large factory floor is the missing cabling, different interfaces and communication protocols at the pumps to get the data centrally collected for condition monitoring. With this reverence design board connected to the vacuum pumps, the permanent measurement data can now be sent wirelessly and easily accessed through the internet. This collection enables the possibility for trend analysis and predictive maintenance. This is an overview of the industrial wireless condition monitoring reference design TIDA010012. The features of this design are multi-protocol support like 6 LOPAN plus Bluetooth low energy, Wi-Fi internet on a chip, it has RS232 and RS422 or RS485 interfaces on the board, it has a 3-wire RTD temperature sensor input and a 4 to 20 milliamp interface on the board. It has isolated digital inputs from 24 volts up to 60 volts on the board. It supports I.O. link up to COM3 speed and a minimum cycle time of 400 microseconds. And it has an onboard humidity sensor. This reference design consists of three different boards. The main board with the MSP432, P4111 and the wired interfaces like RS232, RS485 or I.O. link. The Wi-Fi and display board with the CC3220 module and the CC2652 adapter board for the mesh network and Bluetooth low energy communication. A mesh network using the CC2652 can be established with this reference design. With this wireless mesh network, the vacuum pumps can be connected to a central gateway and the pump data can be collected for condition monitoring. Mesh networks make radio systems more reliable by allowing radios to forward messages for other radios. For example, if a node, the TIDA010012 board, cannot send a message directly to another node, the mesh network forwards the message through one or more intermediary nodes. On this reference design, the 6 LOPAN protocol has been used. Six LOPAN networks are self-healing mesh networks. If a node fails or drops out of the network, the routing protocol is smart enough to find a new way around the failing device. A BeagleBone black board connected to a CC2650 sensor tag forms the edge router to the internet. The CC2650 sensor tag acts as the root node. The BeagleBone black gateway is running a web server. A standard web browser like the Internet Explorer, Firefox or Google Chrome can be used to connect to the BeagleBone Black web server and view the sensor nodes. In addition to the mesh network protocol, the CC2652 can also run Bluetooth Low Energy communication for the configuration and maintenance of the TIDA010012 board. Different vacuum pumps are used in the factory with different interfaces and data types for condition monitoring. Depending on which pump the TIDA010012 is connected to, it needs to run different protocols on RS232 or RS422 or RS485 to read out the data from the vacuum pumps. With the Bluetooth Low Energy interface on the CC2652 adapter board, a smartphone or tablet can be used to configure the TIDA010012 board for the different pump types. After the configuration with Bluetooth Low Energy, the CC2652 will switch from Bluetooth to the Mesh Network protocol to continuously send the data from the pumps for condition monitoring. This picture shows the actual connection of the TIDA010012 boards in the Mesh Network. The orange dots are the nodes connected to the pumps 
and the green dot is the gateway. For test purposes, 22 nodes have been installed. Clicking on the different nodes show the actual vacuum pump data. On this slide you can see an extract of the collected condition monitoring data of one vacuum pump. The oil status, nitrogen flow, water flow and temperature of one pump are shown in this case over several days. This collection enables the possibility for trend analysis and predictive maintenance. The vacuum pump data are also sent to a cloud for condition monitoring. On this reference design, the CC3220 mod is used to connect via Wi-Fi to the IBM Watson IoT service using the MQTT client library API from Texas Instruments. The IBM Watson platform offers a quick start service which allows devices to connect without being registered, to evaluate the platform and verify connection setup. It has pre-integrated support for TI evaluation boards, enabling developers to quickly begin prototyping IoT applications. On this slide, the temperature of one vacuum pump is shown on the IBM Watson IoT platform.